hockey is one of the, if not the, most exciting sport in the world. It is high-flying, physical, intense, but it is also a beautiful game. It is a game that you can have two guys fighting to the bone and moments later embracing, going out for a beer, unified with full respect and maybe even licking each other. In this video, we look at 10 of the most emotional moments in NHL history, some of which you may have never even heard of. And with that, number 10 is a 2004-2005 NHL lockout and return. Let's rewind to a time when the NHL was put on hold, an emotional moment that tested the patience and emotions of fans, players, and everyone in the hockey world. The year was 2004, and the NHL was in a crisis. A labor dispute led to the cancellation of the entire 2004-2005 season. For the first time in 87 years, Lord Stanley's Cup went unclaimed, but legend has it, I actually won it, and the Flames Nation could breathe once again. But fans and players alike were heartbroken and distraught. Players had to go overseas and populate different leagues just so they could stay in top tier shape even though they were playing lesser level opponents. Don't forget, this was the year Alex Ovechkin and Evgeny Malkin were drafted and we didn't even get to see them play. But there is a silver lining to this story. After months of negotiations and countless missed games, even some conspiracy theorists thinking that the game would never return, the NHL had the most triumphant return you would ever see in a sport in the 2005-2006 season. With the first pick of the draft being somebody I think is pretty okay. His name is Sid the Kid. The joy of seeing the puck drop, the roar of the crowds returning to the arenas, and the players back on the ice. It was a moment of rebirth. The lockout taught us that the resilience of the hockey community and the enduring love for the game is emotional. It can be a roller coaster, but it reminded us all why we cherish the sport of hockey. And with that, we've got 19 more unforgettable moments in the world of NHL to explore. Stay with us as we delve deeper into the emotional and extraordinary history of hockey. Number 9 is a tragedy, a very disheartening moment for any Canadian fan. And of course, we are talking about Maurice Richard's retirement. Talking about different eras and the impact on the game, Let's pay tribute to one of the greatest legends in NHL history. Mr. Maurice the Rocket Richard, whose retirement marked the end of an era. Maurice Richard was a scoring machine, a true force of nature on the ice, and he shattered records and captivated the hearts of fans with his incredible talent. He was really the first NHL superstar that the game had ever seen. But, as they say, all good things must come to an end. In 1960, after 18 remarkable seasons with the Montreal Canadiens, Maurice Richard decided to hang up his skates. It was a bittersweet moment for the hockey world. The Rocket had given everything to the game, and his retirement left a void that seemed impossible to fill. On March 11th, 1996, the birthplace of hockey, the Montreal Forum, opened its doors for the very last time. And on this day, they gave the most emotional tribute I have ever seen to the Rockets. The Montreal fans clapped for seven straight minutes and Maurice Richard even shed a tear. As a result, the Rockets' legacy lives on. In 1998-99, the NHL created the Maurice Richard Rocket Trophy for the player that scores the most goals in that NHL season. The very first player to receive this reward was Team Usalani, who may or may not show up later on our list. But as we look back at Maurice Richard's retirement, we must note that he was a French-Canadian fighter. He fought for his dignity, and as a result, the Montreal fans loved him. Next up, we have Patrick Waugh's Statue of Liberty. Throw away your Kleenex. We're going away from the most teary-eyed emotion to the most raw passion and intensity that can only be found in the NHL. Sandstrom with Allison and a glove save! What a save by Waugh! 
let's go back to when one of the greatest goaltenders in the game made a fatal error that changed the course of a playoff series and really the landscape for an up and coming dynasty. Now I know Patrick Waugh is a legendary netminder and now the coach of the New York Islanders. He was known for his incredible skills, his fiery personality, but in one particular game, that fiery spirit and showboating gave us one of the most iconic moments in the league's history. The year was 2002 and it was game six in the Western Conference Finals. One of the most iconic rivalries, Red Wings versus Avalanche. The game is tied going into the second when the most clear goal was robbed. Or wob, should I must say. Mr. Showboat did the Statue of Liberty pose just to prove that the glove had the puck in it. With that quick movement, the puck somehow squirted out and the Red Wings scored. The Avalanche would not recover, losing Game 6 2-0 and in Game 7 they lost 7-0. A complete meltdown, leaving Avalanche fans forever wondering what if. It was the final playoff game and the end of a dynasty for the Colorado Avalanche with Wall exiting Game 7 by being pulled after giving up the first 6 goals. This moment reminds us that the NHL emotions can run high even for the most composed players. It's a testament to how quick the things can change in the NHL. Next up is Steve Sullivan and the fans' karma. Sticking with our Patrick Waugh and Colorado Avs theme, our next moment definitely had emotion, but included a fan and some sense of karma and humor. Steve Sullivan and his Blackhawks were playing against Patrick Waugh and his Avalanche. Sullivan found himself in a rather unfortunate situation though. During the game, he was hit with a high stick, leaving him with an open wound. After getting to the bench, there was a fan in the stands behind him, taunting him behind the glass. The fan may have thought he was safe, but little did he know that Karma has other plans. A few minutes later, when Sullivan was in the play and on the ice again, he chased to the corner where Patrick Waugh played the puck. Waugh, trying to get the puck out of the zone, tried to clear the puck, but it went over the glass, hitting the hand square in the temple. And the fan was bleeding from the head, probably worse than Sullivan. Sullivan, as good as any hockey player would, went straight over to the fan to remind him that he deserved it. To add insult to injury, or putting the salt just freshly in the wound, the entire arena started laughing hysterically and the fan became the butt of a joke. This had to be one of the most satisfying moments in hockey, and it reminds us that in the world of sports, respect goes a long way, and sometimes karma even comes in a form of a well-aimed puck. But our journey through the emotional NHL moments so far is far from over, so stay tuned as we explore more incredible stories from the heart of hockey. At number 6, we go to Hollywood and we take one of the favorite movies that never got released and turn it into an NHL reality. Hockey is the only sport that on any given night a person that otherwise is not a professional hockey player can actually become an NHL hockey player. It is extremely rare but it is called an e-bug or emergency backup goalie. Every team needs backup goalies. If somebody gets hurt, or if you completely suck your balls off, then there is a backup goalie for you. But if the backup goalie gets injured, then we go to an emergency goalie. If every goalie on a team is injured, the game still has to go on. And in one fateful night in Toronto, the mecca of hockey, this happened. It was a regular game for the Carolina Hurricanes a matchup against the formidable Toronto Maple Leafs. But fate had other plans. Both of Carolina's starting and backup goalies were sidelined due to injury, leaving them in a dire situation. In an extraordinary turn of events, the emergency backup goalie David Ayers was thrust into action. At 42 years old, Ayers was not a professional hockey player, but a professional Zamboni driver for the Toronto Marlies, the Maple Leafs AHL affiliate. Against 
all odds, Ayers stepped onto the ice wearing the Hurricanes jersey about to play in his one and only professional hockey game against some of the best players in the world. The hockey world watched in awe as he not only defended the net but secured a remarkable victory against his own hometown team, the Leafs. Three seconds left, here's Clifford, stopped by David Ayers! Okay, let's go from a story that felt good, a guy got a chance to play in the NHL, lifelong lover of the game, to a literal city on fire. In 2011, the Stanley Cup Finals was between two very deserving teams, the Bruins and the Canucks. Both teams had unbelievable seasons overcoming adversity and succeeding at every turn. The Finals came down to a Game 7 in Vancouver. The entirety of Canada was elated except me because it looked like a perfect ending to a Stanley Cup drought in Canada since 1993. The truth is that they were going to be devastated for one team and absolutely euphoric for the other. Boston also had not held a cup for 39 years, and Vancouver had never won a Stanley Cup. Fortunately for Flames fans, the Canucks lost Game 7 for zip but what followed was a nightmare scene where riots engulfed the streets of Vancouver. Fans turned into vandals flipping and burning cars, looting stores, and leaving destruction in their wake. The city was in chaos and the damage amounted to more than five million dollars. In the end, 301 fans faced prosecution, but the scars on the city's reputation and the heart of its people ran deep. It was a stark reminder that while hockey can bring us joy and unity, it can also lead to despair and destruction. With number four, we go to the most humorous and bizarre scenario that I can remember as a hockey fan. Patrick Stefan played for the Dallas Stars in 2007. During the regular season, the Stars were playing against the Edmonton Oilers in Rogers Arena. With nine seconds left, the Oilers added an extra skater by pulling their goalies and Patrick Stefan stole the puck at the near blue line. It looked like the easiest goal you could imagine. However, instead of just, you know, putting it into the net, he decided to go to the crease and the puck jumped over his stick and he then fell down. And the rest is NHL history. Stefan steals and he'll ice it. Oh, at least I thought he was gonna until he blew it. That's unbelievable. The Oilers picked up the puck and started to fly down the other end. With two seconds to go in the game, the Edmonton Oilers sent it to overtime and eventually won in overtime. It was such a bizarre and emotional moment that the announcer himself said in his 25 years, he had never seen anything so strange. The other commenter said, Stefan should be ashamed of himself and there is no place in the NHL for such behavior. This moment reminded us how fast-paced and precise hockey is. You cannot think for a minute that the game is over or get lazy. Unfortunately for Stefan, he learned that the hard way. At number three, we go back to the old school hockey. Two original six teams were playing in 1979. Boston and the New York Rangers in Madison Square Garden. Games at the MSG are always electric, and this game was no different. The Bruins were winning by a goal and had seconds left on the clock. Hall of Famer Phil Esposito had the puck and was all alone on the breakaway to the end. The Bruins goalie made a great save and the game was over. Esposito then broke his stick and dread it off the ice. But for some reason, the rest of the Ranger team and the entire Bruins team started having words in the corner near the Bruins goal. The refs tried to break it up to no avail. For a few minutes, there were no punches that were thrown. But then two guys broke away near the glass and started throwing mild punches. 
In hockey terms, they are barely even touching each other. But one Ranger fan thinks it's a good idea to grab the Bruins player's stick. And when that happened, mayhem ensued. The Bruins players think it is a good idea to literally climb the glass into the stands and start pummeling the Ranger fans. The sheer absurdity of the scene was insane enough watching hockey players with the skates and full gear climbing into the stands to fight, but this all happened in MSG. With all the commotion, Boston's Mike Wilbury, in a move that defies explanation, ran into the stands, grabbed a fan's shoe, and began beating him with it. It was a moment of utter madness with a brawl that transcended the boundaries of the rink. Thankfully, this event ended with very minimal damage, but it could have been a lot worse. At number two, we have Ray Emery versus Holtby. Number two reminds us that even when the score is lopsided, the emotions can run and the unexpected is just around the corner. As the Capitals were beating the Flyers 7 to nothing in the third period, in an already chippy game, Tom Wilson and Wayne Simmons got in a nice scrap. As they are fighting, the Flyers goalie Ray Emery comes flying down the ice to challenge Brandon Holtby, the goalie for the Caps. At first, Holtby is not interested, but Emery cannot take no for an answer and proceeds to wallop on Holtby. The refs surprisingly let them go for it and they had had an all-time scrap which predictably led to a full-line brawl. What's going on? There's been a lot of talk going back and forth, and it, anything but friendly. Oh, and this, is going going now. Now is, uh... this was not your typical goalie fight. It was a brawl that shocked hockey fans and players alike. It really created an iconic moment, but it also created rule changes in the leagues on goalie fighting trying to keep goalies safe. At number one, we are sticking with goalies because Dominic Hasek, a Hall of Fame goaltender known for his flexibility and flamboyant saves, was an icon for the Detroit Red Wings dynasty in the 90s. Dominic Hasek was known for his aggressive style of goaltending and his tendency to venture out of the crease. But in a game against the Minnesota Wild, he may have gone too far. Marian Gaborik, known for his blazing speed, found himself on a breakaway racing towards the Sabres net. The Dominator, never one to shy away from a challenge, charged to meet Gaborik head on. What followed was a collision that every fan in the stands and watching at home could feel themselves. Hasek collided with Gaborik, sending the speedy forward airborne. Borak executed a full flip in the air before landing on the ice. Look out! Hatchet coming out! Oh! Gabrick oh. right over top of Dom! Oh, is is he gonna get a tripping penalty? Miraculously, Borak emerged unscathed from the collision and the moment became an instant highlight reel. It was one of those shocking moments that reminds you of how fast and intense the play is and how unbelievably athletic the players are. If you like this video, don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow, and see you next time.